don't come back from a labor. This sounds a bit better, don't it? <laughs> I start call gear, only five shillings back this week. Because I've had a good ox fam for a rig out. <laughs> Y'all can laugh, but that's where it come from. <laughs> so I get it five shillings. Well, that five shillings lasted him all week. Never come and ask me for a pint or nothing. So at the weekend, I said, well, you're done marvellous with that five shilling. I said, I don't know how you're managed. He says, you will, because it's your turn next week. <laughs> well, I went to Oxfam, and I had this rig out, and I got a pair of men's working boots in the window. I thought, oh, good man, I'll take them all. My task seemed to go to work. I said, how much of the boots? He says, five shilling. I said, I think I'll take them. And there was a woman looking at him as well. He said, it's no good me taking them mine. Because he's got quarter to four feet. <laughs> so I took him back home. He tried them on now and just his feet. He says, the, the leather's a bit old though. He says, I think I'll put them in the oven and sack them a bit. So I put him in the oven. When he got him out, that one shriveled. He couldn't stir him on his feet. I said, well, you're done something now, ain't you? Five shillings thrown away. I said, what are you going to do with them? He said, I think I'll advertise them for a pair of riding boots. <laughs> so he put advert in the window down the road. And the next day we had a bloke come. He said, I think you've got a pair of riding boots for sale. I wish I would have He says, they're not riding boots. They're nothing like riding boots. My mum says, if they ain't riding boots, you'll try walking in them. <laughs> shoes with the tapper coming off. So I took them to the cobblers. I said, how much do you charge to sole a nail? He says, I charge 15 shillings to sole, 10 shillings to heel. I said, well, you can heel these all the way up. <laughs> to Sally out, because that we'd have gone to leave Sally out. I'd never been on a train before. I thought, oh, good man, I'd go today. So I got on the station, there was a long queue waiting. So I got at the back, and while I stood there, a bloke come and tapped me on my shoulder, and he says, Mrs, can you tell me how to book for this train? I said, why, H.I., I've been on one before. He says, no. I said, no, right, I ate. I in the same boat as me, get at the back. <laughs> when you owe me book my ticket, you're only going to do the same. He says, okay, so he got at the back. When I got up to the booking clock, I said, Sally out, single. <laughs> when it was his turn, he says, Tommy K. Lai, married. <laughs> says, hey, I want to know where you want to go to. He says, what's it to do with you? He hasn't that Sally out where hers are going. <laughs> well, I left them 
you arguing. And I got on the train, I was giddy. I was glad to get off. And I got to the top of our funny street. I was just going round the corner. And a bloke come running round, and well, he knocked me flying. He says, Mrs. I sit here and all the pigs go by here. <laughs> I said, why has he dropped off? <laughs> well, I got down to our fannies, I got all the curtains drawn. I think, hello, our fannies, Jed. <laughs> I knocked the door and fanny come. I said, oh, Fanny, how frightened me. I says, what's got all this lot wrapped up for? He says, I've been a very in Shanghai little today. And we've had to show a bit of respect. Oh, I said, Shanghai Lil. Did her in Elza when I long ago? Oh, Fanny, I don't know where it was, Jane. Fanny said, well, if her yet, I played her a nasty trick today. <laughs> This is Ashley thought her man had gone a for her. Because he ain't got two hands of flesh on him. The last time I see him, I thought, Jack, another client shirt to see how off. <laughs> he says he's only ever took his wife on one holiday. In all the 40 years they were married, and he took her to Blackpool last year and had a stroke. Must have been the shock of taking her. <laughs> I killed her, I brought her back home. Fanny says, I went in. I says, Jack, can I have a look at her? She says, oh, I was up there. I says, I went up. I had a look at her. Come down. I said, Jack, I look lovely lady there. Jack says, I think her oh, dear, we just had a week at Blackpool. <laughs> And it has got such a lovely smile on her face. Jack says, oh, I don't know his jet yet. <laughs> and his mum sat up the corner, taking it all in, he does pay. Got two fingers wrapped up. That's when he done, Joe, had accident. He says, oh, I had it under the press at work. I only had the one under post. And they don't believe me how I done it, so I showed them. <laughs> he says, another man went round the big wheel five times before they stopped it. When they got him off, they put him on the floor. And the foreman says, Spake to me, Fred. Spake to me. Fred says, Amanda, I don't. I've just gone round there five times. Your day spake to me. And you see, I don't come here very often. Just let's go out for all the day. We catch the bus. So we catch the bus. I said, get your money out. Ticket bombs are coming. I said, I'll be so dead if how he gets to me. <laughs> the conductor was one of them Indians with a turban on his head. And he says, you ain't going to come out, you know, when you're washed your head. <laughs> when we got off the bus, we stopped right by a posh rock shack. Fanny looked in and says, I should love all the fan of that stick, Joe Tappy. I said, hey, this is a posh shop. I said, when you go in these places, you have to mind how you are talking. 
Mrs. Anna, where did you hope when I go in these places? Oh, indeed. Off the van. Off Stick Joe Toffee, please. <laughs> and would you mind smashing it all? <laughs> This is what I'm all these for. <laughs> I said, when the two will stay to dinner. <laughs> this is again up on mine, it's too cold. <laughs> As you want to serve the eggs? said, well, if you can eat one, I can't. <laughs> Dish on the table, got some yellow stuff in. Fanny says, I bet that's a sweet after we had our dinner. But I'll have a spoonful after. I dragged me on back on the floor. And while I was a picking it up, I had a spoonful of this yellow stuff. And the tears was a running down her face. And I looked up at her, I said, well, what are you blatting for? I was, says, I was just a thinking about me old grandfather. They hung him in Brummagem, you know, years ago. And they asked him if he got her a last request. He says, oh, put the rope round me waist, I got a bile on me neck. <laughs> And I never thought my mouth would go cold anymore. <laughs> and the tears run down my face. And he looked at me and started to laugh. This is them what we all blatting for. I said, of course, they dang me when they own the old grandfather. <laughs> well, we had a good off day. How did we come back to Fanny's? I'd been waiting for the television man to mend the telly. And he come while I was in. He said, what's the matter with it? Fanny said, I don't know, it don't work. And when you're done that, have a look at him up the corner. He don't work either. <laughs> and the bloke says, what is he, redundant? Fanny says, no, he was born like it. <laughs> but he meant it to tell her he switched it on. It was the commercials. It was the bra. Do you know I've washed this bra 65 times and it still stretches like new. Fanny says, you are telling lies. I've only washed mine until I wear them around my knees now. <laughs> and the next one was the stalk margarine. I says, Fanny, have you tried the new stalk? Fanny says, I ate. I've had enough of the old one. <laughs> And the last one was a kitty cat. Fanny says, that's the stuff to kill ya. <laughs> Old Liza down the road he used to give him on a plate full of kitty cat every day. Every time I've gone in, I says he's been a spooning kitty cat up. I says, Liza, one of these times he's kill him, giving him that stuff. Oh, I sure to says he loves it. But it won't long before they come and tell Fanny he begged out. Fanny says, I went across. I said, Liza, what did I tell you? I told you I'd kill him. Oh, he says it wore the kitty cat. He was up the ladder of paper in the sailing and he turned round to lick his back. <laughs> well, folks, I've got to wind up now. And I hope you've enjoyed my entertainment. 
And I hope we'll see you all again some other time. So cheerio. Now I thought in the house, listening to the news, I was fed up with everything, especially standing in queues. My mum says, I'll go up the Nelson and have a drink. So while he was out, I started to think. For years and years now, he's had me under. But from tonight, I'm a being a slave no longer. He's finished sitting by the table on a Friday night waiting for some money to go and fly his kite. I'm a reading the riot act out when he comes. The rate we are going on, we soon have the bums. He's been on the labour now above 12 months. He says, that's the best place to work, my wench. I can't go in your pumps. <laughs> was turned 11 o'clock that night when he come in. I says, hello, cocky, when you think you have been? He says, oh, Ed, we had a night. We've been a-drinking gin. I said, don't matter about my kidneys as long as you one can swim. <laughs> and you've been a-drinking every night this week. While I'm here, I've got to have my grocery and my clobber all on the tick. But as sure as there's whitewash on them there walls, I'm a-taking all your clothes tomorrow to the three brass balls. <laughs> He took his jacket off and he sat on the stool. He says, Doll, I said, I tell they, I've won 20 pounds on Little Lutz Pills. I says, oh, now that's different. But you're here to keep in the lot. He says, no, nah, I bought a motorbike and sidecar to take you to Stratford Mop. He says, a bloke in the Nelson had got it to sell. And Fowler can sit in the sidecar. So it's a good one, you can tell. But I'm a fetching it round tomorrow night. And you can have a good look at it while it's light. The next night I stood in the front garden and I heard the biggest row. There was someone coming up the street just like the council snow plow. And the stink from the petrol, it made me good dizzy. It was my mana coming warm, bringing the old tin Lizzie. He drove up by me and he went to get off. He says, I'll leave it here a bit and let it cool off. And he said, if that's serious, I was a dying to laugh. I said, I bet they a packet of fakes, it don't rage Stratford mop. He said, well, get the jacket on, we go for a ride. Y'all can see whether the sidecar's comfortable inside. I said, well, to look at it, it's like a big armchair. He said, get your jacket on, don't stand there and sneer. By the time he'd started it up again, he was out of breath. Then the sidecar started to shake and frighten me to death. <laughs> I said, I can see where I'm going, over somebody's edge. He says, lie down and relax, my wench, I'll think you am in bed. <laughs> but the first journey we done, it turned out all right. He says, now I'm letting it lie in state for the next fortnight. I said, well, the crater can do with it, because it's all of a shake. Just know how old it is. It must be 1850, Meg. When the morning arrived for Stratford Mop, we both got up early. It looked like being hot. I cooked him his breakfast, eggs and ham, while I sat there with a bit of Aunt Lil's spam. Then I cut some more sandwiches, made a bottle of tea, and in less than no time, we went on us way. And the bike... It simply fled down Agley Hill. I says, ain't he got near a break on? <coughs> he says, he sits still. <laughs> then he went over a brick in the middle of the road and the tea bottle broke. <laughs> and went all over me clothes. I says, now look what you have been and gone and done. He says, oh, take no notice, my wench, it'll dry in the sun. <laughs> I said, he's gone over that in broad daylight. I don't know what you're running to a coming warm tonight. 
We got as fur as dry twitch and the back tyre went flat. I said, get off, cocky. The big end's gone at the back. He says, if it has, my 20 pounds gone smack. I says, oh, and the bloke who bought it off, he's a laughing all round his clack. <laughs> it took him well two hours to get it a-going. He says, yet my throat dry. I says, he's done enough spitting and pouring. And again, we weren't ready, there was a traffic jam. I said, come on, sit on the bunk and eat us bread and jam. And a fella come by with a little chap. The kid looked at our bike and he started to clap. He says, oh, hey, father, is that a submarine? <laughs> His father says, no, my son, that's something that has been. <laughs> I looked at me bloke, I thought he was going to cry. I said, don't pull a face like that, my mum, I think this Popeye. He says, for two pins, I'd go and jump off that eye wall. I said, if isn't to leave in the back with me, take that and all. <laughs> he says, come and let's go warm. I says, well, we might. We'll get Methuselah warm while it's light. In case all its intestines dropping out on the road. He says, don't talk like that, you are making me go cold. Halfway up Agley Hill, the bark begun to chant. <coughs> I think I can. I think I caught. Then clank, the sidecar dropped off, just like a big tank. And I really thought I was going to die. My mum was a clinging to the bike, just like a big mayfly. <laughs> there was a rag and bone man coming up the road. I said, hey, mister, how much for this load? He says, two bob and a blether, missus. That's all this worth. I see, keep the blether and stick it up the waistcoat. <laughs> but we had the two bob and we wished him good night. And that was the end of the motorbike. And folks, I hope you've enjoyed it because it was my own composition. <laughs> But me and our fanny went to have a drink. And we were sitting in the pub with all for pint. And who should come in but old Charlie, one of Fanny's neighbours. Of course, whenever he see us, he shouted, Hello, Fanny. What's the beer like? Fanny says, Awful, I'll be glad when I've had enough. <laughs> <laughs> he says, I reckon you ain't see the bloke coming here with one eye named Tony. Fanny says, I don't think so. What's his other eye name? <laughs> <coughs> One of the meanest men you ever met, old Charlie. He used to find a plaster in the road. He cut his finger to use it up. <laughs> Any day by none of his kids a present last Christmas. He went on the landing, lit a firework, went back in the room. He says, Santa, what come tonight? He's just shot himself. <laughs> he says, they don't know they'm born today. The kids don't. Nor the folks. Not on them. I don't care the young ones or nothing. He says, they don't know they're born. He says, y'all look at me. I went all through the war. I was a prisoner of war in one of them constipation camps. <laughs> and they were dropping all them indecency bombs. <laughs> he says, I don't know them born. He says, and, and another thing, he says, y'all give me the old pubs any time. We all could have a big fire and they'll sit down and warm yourself. He says, I've missed those pubs. He says, and the spittoons one there. I misses the spittoons. The barman said, y'all missed them when we had them and all. <laughs> <laughs> well, me and our fanny come out after a bit. And the next time I said it was in the doctor's. And I'd been up there for some sleeping tablets. And the doctor gave me some. And I'd got a tick one while I was asleep. <laughs> <laughs> and the other just before I woke up. <laughs> 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 and 
Then I went back home. And my man was a sitting up the corner ever so slack. Because he'd all let nothing worry him. I said, hey, when I look at you, I said, I often wonder whether not going to work worries you. Any day like it. He said, why? And I said, well, do you ever think you'd like to go to work? He said, no, why? <laughs> I said, I got one shilling in my post. I don't know whether to gas myself with it or buy lock. I said, of course, when you've gone out, I says, you're never, you're never coming back and saying, thank you, you're a green coat to go for a job. Oh, well, he says, I have seen them give them out. He says, but they're giving them the young ones, you see, because they serve their apprenticeship on the labour. <laughs> I says, you are not He says, oh, they had the best years of my life. <laughs> He says, they won't throw me off. I said, no, they had the best years of your life because you're a wolf, I'll pair of pumps out. <laughs> I said, but you'll have a shock one of these mornings. They'll have a card waiting for you. And they did. His mate told me. He said, I see his face change. All the colour went out. He slumped down by the counter. He shot until I looked at him. I said, he's either dead or my watch has stopped. <laughs> But he went up to the job and I could tell he got it when he come in. Because he did look a bit happy. <laughs> I said, and he got on? He said, I've got a job. I said, corn in Egypt. When you gotta go? He said, in the morning, oh past seven. I said, somebody will have to sit up all night to get the up. <laughs> I said, how much am they paying you? He says, oh, I asked him that. I said, how much do you pay here? The gaffer says, I'll pay a man what he's worth. I say, it's no good to me. I had more than that at the last place. <laughs> the gaffer says, what was your last job? I say, I used to wring a window leather out for a one-armed window cleaner. <laughs> I got up first the next morning and I shouted upstairs when he went for your breakfast. He says, hot pie and call me when it's cold. <laughs> See, I went to go. I heard him get out of bed. He shouted downstairs, I don't think I'm a go in this foggy. <laughs> I said, hey, Foggy, he says, it's Foggy, I'll go see the rooftops. I said, you don't go that road. <laughs> Come downstairs, he got more aches and pains. He'd never had them on the labour. He said, hey, I've got some ringing noises in my head. I said, I've had them in mine all the week, but I've been that hard hearing, I hate hearing them. He says, where's my new shirt? I said, I've cut it up to patch your old ones. <laughs> he says, where's my scarf? I says, here it is. He said, I want that and it's too tight. <laughs> <laughs> then he was looking round for summer. That's what we're after. He says, my waistcoat. I said, he's got it on. He says, oh, well, if you went to tell me, I should go and rout it. <laughs> I filled him a flask of tie. He says, I could get that in my pocket. I said, pair a drop of the tie out then. <laughs> well, folks, I've got to wind up. Five minutes. Yeah, boy, no, no. Keep going, Keep going, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I saw Dan, I had a cup of tea. And I thought, well, it's a shame he worked a good while. 
He's bound to sit down on the road of coming back. So I get him something nice for his tie. So I went to the fish shop. I said, pair of kippers, please. He says, I'm sorry, Mrs. I ain't got a pair in the place. I said, two oddens will do. <laughs> And I went to the maid chap. I said, half a pound of lean liver. <laughs> he says, we've got no liver. He said, I've got some rum steak. I said, give me half a pound. So he cut it, slapped it on the scales. He says, how's that? I said, please to cut that a bit lower down, a bit cow <laughs> Well, I went back home and I got him his tie. And he was ringing wet when he come back. And I said, we know been in the court. He says, oh, come round that road for a short cut. <laughs> there was a bloke in the waiter shouting out. So I went to the side. I said, what are you doing in there? He says, I'm a drowning myself. I said, what's keep coming up for then? <laughs> He says, well, I got a bray there, Ty. <laughs> I said, why do you hang yourself on that tree over there? You've been a lot better than jumping in that waiter. Oh, he says, I tried that last week, but I couldn't manage it. I said, where'd you put the rope? He says, round me waist. <laughs> he says, I at you, I got a bile on me neck. <laughs> I'll tell you